Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Till <laughs> some wild news coming out of the transfer portal Saturday afternoon as former five star cornerback Hermione McLean emerging as a top target for the Florida Gators in the transfer portal. I want to talk about this from a couple of different angles. Let's talk one. Should the Florida Gators be going after Kermani McLean? And then more importantly, I mean, what would it look like for Kermani McLean to join this Florida Gators defense? Now, before we get into it, one, would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. We read the message boards. We read, we read Twitter. We know there are a lot of Florida Gator fans who would very much want Kermani McLean in Gainesville. And we know there's a lot of Florida Gator fans who say, hey, we went after him out of high school. We're good. We'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section. We'll give you guys some of our opinions as well. Before we get into it, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys and to the Florida Gator fans. I mean, it's been it's been a blast talking this program on the recruiting trail in the transfer portal. Sounds like it's going to get a little bit more fun as well. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, can't thank you guys enough for rocking with the fellas and let it fly in the comments section. Dill, I'll ask you kind of point blank here. Should the Florida Gators be going after Kamani McLean here? The college football fan in me says there are not that many guys who are as talented as Kamani McLean, and college football is a talent acquisition game at the end of the day in a lot of ways. And if Billy Napier and his staff believe in what they can do with him and what he can provide that team, and they do their due diligence, which no doubt they will, I don't see how you can pass him up. I almost feel like it's a little bit like the Spencer Rattler story. A yeah. little bit where, again, coming off a of QB1, some moments at Oklahoma where people – Oh, this guy's locker room killer, all this. It's a, you only hear one side, and then he gets to South Carolina as an absolute exemplary teammate. Deals with a lot of difficulties with like that offensive line not playing well, some things around him. Never complained, never had bad body language, no issues at South Carolina, and had a lot to do with them having that magical year in 2022. So, again, you you hear the one side. I you just like – if they believe in him, they believe him. I'm and I all. think from the bottom line, it's like it makes sense for kids to mature. Like I think back to when I was a 17, 18-year-old kid, I, awesome. I made a lot of mistakes, right? And when the spotlight is on you like it is for Kermani McLean, your mistakes get highlighted to the whole world. And so the way I look at this situation, I kind of go and agree with you. One, Spencer Rattler, I think, is a phenomenal example of a guy that, all right, locker room question marks, comes to South Carolina, was an A-plus teammate. You look at Kermani McLean and you say, if Billy Napier and this coaching staff, they do their due diligence, they have that conversation on what is it going to look like and how are you expected to operate when you join this Florida Gators program and you kind of believe that Kermani McLean is going to tighten it up, whether it's on the field, off the field, you got to bet on this kind of kid. And I think go back to you know, like, what's the worst that can happen? If you feel really good about the culture of your locker room, one player that might not fit shouldn't kill that culture. So what happens? What's the worst that can happen? You take Hermione McLean. Maybe he doesn't work out. He hits the portal again in six months. But what if he does work out? You're looking at potentially an All-American caliber cornerback. because you, you have asymmetric upside, right? I'm kind of with you. I don't totally see what the downside is because, again, it's like with the new way of college football, guys just leave. And if they leave, you know, like go each go their separate ways. No harm, no foul. It's like – yeah, and you're right. If he works out, you're looking, and we look at this Florida secondary right now, some of these young guys in it, and you look at what that could be. That is unbelievably exciting what that secondary could be if you have a really good part So part. you look at the 2023 class, right, the guys who are true freshmen for the Florida Gators, right? You'd add Kermani McLean into that class. You would have Jakeem Jackson and Kermani McLean on the boundary. You would have Sharif Denson, who I think is a phenomenal player playing that nickel. And then Jordan Castell and Bryce Thornton at the safety position. That is one of, if not the most talented young secondaries that you'll see in college football. You look at Austin Armstrong, how he wants to operate. He wants to lean on that back end of the defense, put some guys on islands, ask a lot of them. That's a perfect match. And again, you talk about what they've done in the trenches, Kelby Collins, LJ McCray, a couple other guys that I'm not naming. That's a defense that has a ton of talent. And whether Kamani McClain puts it together immediately in 2024 or whether it hits in 2025, I, I look at the future of this Florida Cater's defense with the addition of Kamani McClain and say, this is going to be an absolute force for the next couple of years. And one thing I'd add in addition is like, Billy Napier and this staff probably know him as well as anyone. I mean, they recruited him hard out of high school. He's obviously a Florida yeah. guy. So again, like they, 
they got to You got to believe they know the relationship they have. They know what they can do. And, and you just, if you don't trust your head coach, then you might as well not have them. You got to lean on them. Got to trust what they're going to do. And again, I'm with you. It's you just look at the upside. You can't ignore it. And I saw a couple of Florida fans like throw this in the message boards as this news has literally just come out 10 minutes ago. Florida fans already filling up the message boards. I was checking it out before we went live here. Like, did he have a little like humble pie? And that, like, sometimes that's what you need. Like, this is a guy who was the best player on the football field since he's been six years old. And so, okay, now it doesn't go your way. You kind of got to eat a little bit of humble pie. Maybe you get just a better version of Kermani McLean, whether it's just maturing, whether it's kind of maybe getting knocked down a few rungs and saying, hey, I got to gotta look at my own self, kind of fix some of my behavior. Again, if Billy Napier has those conversations and say, hey, this is the expectation, this is what it needs to look like, I don't see why you don't go after him. And I think the second point is probably a pretty good discount. You know what I mean? Like this is not a guy that coming out of high school, you would have to invest a lot of NIL resources to get him in this program. You're getting a five-star talent, not going to say for free, but you're getting him at a, you're kind of buying low on a kid like Kermani McLean. I think for a lot of reasons that would make a lot of sense. So you combined what you said at the top, football, just being a talent acquisition game. You want to bet on as many kids like Cormani McLean as you can. And then you combine that with just the idea that I don't think this is like a super high risk acquisition. Like you bring him in, he doesn't work. You're, you're right. It's not like the Dominic Williams, maybe sweepstakes where Brian Kelly even came out and said it. It's like, look, what, what do I tell everyone else if I bring a guy in for, and who knows what the numbers are. People yeah, yeah. Them all the time. But you get a sense there maybe was a number on it. If you bring a guy in, that's very disruptive, especially if they don't produce. Like if they're really good, fine. No, well, whatever. If you're a good player, you're a good player. But it's it's not it's just not that situation, I don't think, because I'm with you. I don't think this is it doesn't sound like it's the most hot recruiting battle in the world at this point, just given where we're at. And and I think one other thing to kind of add on to why I'm kind of buying into this idea is. I don't know a ton about guys like Bryce Thornton or Jordan Castell or DJ Lagway, some of the young guys in this locker room who are going to kind of be creating the culture over the next couple of years. From what I've seen, like I trust those guys. And so you get Kermione McLean around those kind of individuals, those pros who are 18, 19 years old, like probably just going to get the best out of this. Good, com- good competitive room. I'm with you. I think that's a big factor. in and, this. Kind of- and I'm just a believer in like not – raking kids over the coals who are 18 years old. Like, again, I just go back to when I'm 18. A lot of you guys who are listening, you remember when you're back to 18 and just say, I wasn't perfect either. And it's hard when you are one of the biggest names in the college football landscape who played for a program that had so much spotlight under it. I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Personally, as a college football fan, it kind of fires me up from what it sounds like. I also want to see him playing big time college football, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. This kid is playing at the big time schools on the big time stage. Yeah, that's where he belongs. All right, we'll close it out on that. Would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Appreciate y'all rocking with it. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to y'all later.